spreads in cervical surgeries for drug delivery to the brain tumors. Dr. Kamresh. Now? Yes? All right. Well, first of all, I would like to thank the organizers of the conference to extend uh, a very warming uh, invitation. Uh, and what I'd like to do today actually will not go very much into the ethics. I think last uh, whole day we learned a lot about the animal care and the three R's. But what I'd like to do is present you with a very challenging problem, which mostly neurosurgeons uh, have experienced over the years. So historically, next slide please. <coughs> of course, like all programs using animals, you have to write an extensive and defensible IAC protocol and determine the number of rats required, which necessitates the services of a very experienced uh, professor of statistics. So the work that I'm going to present to you is really a team effort of neurosurgeons, mostly from Japan <coughs> or China, who come to the lab, a very brilliant neurosurgeon uh, who was at UCLA first, and then he moved to see the Sinai American Center, both in Los Angeles. And I will actually try to uh, present this work in light of the fact that, next slide please, next please. The real problem of delivering drugs to the brain exists at the level of the blood-brain barrier. And this picture of a young rat shows that no histamine crosses the CNS. And it is because the blood-brain barrier comprises of brain, brain capillaries which are very unique. They are unlike the capillaries of the other systemic organs because they are very tightly regulated. As you all know nothing larger than 400, uh, what shall I say, uh, the muscle weight beyond 400, uh, 400, those compounds cannot enter the brain because of the BVB. And also, blood-brain barrier is known as immune privileged organ because nothing exits the brain into the systemic circulation. And so this is actually the diagrammatic representation of the cellular components of the normal BVB, which is the endothelium, and you have astrocytes, parasites, and some uh, neuronal innovation. Next slide, please. So this is actually a summary slide showing that the normal blood-brain barrier, the permeability does not change with infused vasoactive substances. However, if you're dealing with an animal or human who have developed the brain tumors, the scenario has changed. The astrocytes have been replaced by tumor cells, or in the case of injured blood-brain barrier, without head injury or what have you, especially soldiers, uh, these two scenarios, the blood tumor barrier or the injured BBB becomes responsive to infused visual substances and it enhances the overall permeability, allowing you a small window of about 45 minutes, during which time you can deliver a large bolus of an anti-tumor drug specifically to the tumor and not to the normal brain surround tumor. So there are lots of constraints in developing these technologies, which took uh, several groups, nearly 35 years, which I'm going to uh, compress here. Next one, please. <coughs> so here are two shots of uh, how stereotech craniotomy is performed, and many of you may have done this. And this is required for implantation of rat-specific glioma cells. Okay? 
So you drill a hole using a dental drill about five millimeter deep to the right side of the bregma, and using a Hamilton syringe, uh, you insert it down to a depth of about five millimeter, and that is how you inject your glioma cells. This, these are survival surgeries, okay? Next slide, please. So about seven days after brain tum tumor cell implantation, the tumors become approximately seven to nine, uh, seven to ten, nine to ten millimeter diameter, and then the non-survival surgeries are performed on day eleven or twelve after tumor implantation. So several surgical procedures are performed on each tumor-bearing day, uh, tumor-bearing rat, on the day of non-survival surgeries. At any time, if the researcher or the vivarium staff finds the animal to be sick, it is immediately euthanized. That's a problem. Next one, please. So I don't know if many of you can see the details, but here are some examples of catheterization of femoral vessels, femoral arteries and vein, and then here is the infusion protocol. At the start, either you deliver a vehicle, which is the, the saline, or a visoactive molecule, bradykinin. It is infused either intracarotid or intravenous at 53 microliters per minute for 15 minutes. And then we inject a bolus of C14 labeled radio tracer. Uh, and this ends at 15 minutes. So here is the uh, snapshot of the infusion setup. So blood is collected uh, and the blood pressure is also monitored constantly. Now, <clears throat> Now starts the real fun. Next slide, please. So again, I'm, I apologize that some of these uh, cannulations uh, may not be visible clearly, but a lot of uh, cannulations are done or clampings are done on a common carotid artery in order to deliver drug through the, inter, uh, through the internal carotid artery directly to the brain. And uh, next one, please. So then these brains are harvested and they are frozen in uh, alcohol and dry ice baths. And then cryo sections are cut. And we pick several points from the ipsilateral side where the tumor was implanted or the contralateral side. And that is to carry out the quantitative autoradiography to calculate the amount of increase in the permeability of the blood tumor barrier. And the whole idea behind this line of experiments was to determine the best vasoactive molecule that can allow a neurosurgeon to open the human blood tumor barrier to deliver the type of drug. Okay? So that was the motive behind all of these studies. Next one, please. <clears throat> so this table actually uh, gives you the numbers. And what you will see here is that if you use a radioactive molecule, the bradykinin, uh, you will have enhanced the permeability by 32, uh, uh, by fourfold. Okay? Uh, and you can do the same thing in a dose-dependent manner. Uh, but then there's a finite limit beyond which you can't go. Uh, next one, please. <clears throat> so we have looked at a number of uh, radioactive molecules for biochemically opening the blood tumor barrier, uh, such as leukotrienes, uh, acyacin, bradykinin, I mentioned, nitric oxide donors, cyclic GMP, phosphodiesterase inhibitors, one cyclic agonists, calcium dependent potassium channel agonists, and ATP dependent potassium channel agonists. And I'll tell you the overall outcome and benefit that came out of all these extensive studies. Next slide, please. So, first of all, this approach using bradykinin or a synthetic molecule called RMP7, which was used in the first ever, ever human clinical trials to deliver anti tumor drugs allows you to deliver 
small to large sized molecules across the blood tumor barrier. From as small as 103 Dalton to as big as 70,000 Daltons. Next one, please. You can also deliver other therapeutic molecules, interferon gamma, gain of alpha, or IL-2. Okay, and, and the point here is that most of these drugs and molecules are delivered to the tumor center and not the other nearby areas. Because that is your desirable uh, criterion, that you only want to deliver these uh, antibiotic poison <laughs> to the tumor, but not to the normal brain. Next one, please. <clears throat> so then we focused on uh, potassium channels. And I'll tell you in a minute why. There are four types of potassium channels. Water-gated potassium channels, uh, which are mostly found in our neurons and nerves. Next one, please. The inward rectifier potassium channel. Next one, please. The calcium divided potassium channel. And lastly, the ATP dependent potassium channel. Now, we found that all of these vasoactive molecules, they open KCA channel. So, if we had an agent that allows you to open KCA channel, you have solved one major problem. And that is, there will be no drop in blood pressure of the animal or the patient. Okay? Next one, please. <clears throat> so here are some examples of what happens if you are uh, delivering PBS or this one compound, which is a specific opener of KCA channels, and it's 1619, which was created by a Danish company, uh, which closed down, I think, a couple of years ago, uh, Brady Kynan. And this is ibidotoxin, which is a specific inhibitor of KCA channel, and what you see is there's no uh, dye over here. Brady kind of delivers a dye to tumor site, so does this opener of the KCA channel. Okay. The same is shown in autoradiographic images. Next one, please. <clears throat> so here is the major finding of seven years of work done by several neurosurgeons, uh, scientists, and what have you. But all of these compounds, radioactive molecules, they act to this point of convergence, KC channels, and that allows you to enhance the BTP permeability and deliver selective, uh, in a selective manner, the, the therapeutic drugs to the tumor. We then next also looked that by opening KC channels, what happens is vesicle transport in the capillary endothelium of the tumor cells increases and paracellular transport through tumor capillary tight junctions may also increase. Next slide, slide please. So here are some electromicrographs. Here you see a picture with, uh, uh, from a rat bearing tumor infused with PBS. Here you see Brady Kynan. I want to bring your attention to this array of vesicles. Okay? So that is the luminal side. This is the abluminal side. So when we are infusing a radioactive molecule, it generates an array of uh, these uh, vesicles, and they move from the lumen towards the, uh, uh, towards the abluminal side, the other side. Okay? Uh, and leukotriene C4 was another agent that we used, and it gives you the same results. Okay? Next. So now we did the same experiment, except now we were using Histamine, and this is uh, these are all electromographs showing that histamine was encapsulated in these vesicles, and it travels from the luminal to the abdominal side. So now we have identified the cellular mechanism of the drug transport across the lumen of these brain capillaries into the tumor side. So this is the take-home message that some molecules which can depress the blood pressure, and if instead of using them, you can use a calcium-dependent potassium channel opener, you can do the same trick and deliver drugs uh, to the brain tumor. Okay? So this cartoon actually summarizes 
all these data in a very simplified manner. Uh, next slide, please. So I must acknowledge this uh, research was funded by several funding agencies over the years. Uh, next one, please. And I'd like to thank you for your attention, and I hope I'm on time. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, let me end by telling you this work was finished in 2002. I moved to India about five years ago. I was asked to help a PhD student. And in a new lab, we didn't have supercomputers. So JNU was instrumental in helping my student and, and uh, Dr. Andrew Lin, our collaborator, who is the director of the uh, uh, computational and, and, and uh, integrator uh, studies, he provided all the supercomputing power to this young man. And he created a library of 122 compounds, starting from NS1649, this Danish molecule. And now we have brought them down to four best molecules that we can synthesize in the lab. As you know, one of the major problems in development of neuropharmaceutics is we can, create, we can create any number of compounds, right? Then we test them for the cytotoxicity in vitro. Why? <laughs> People plunk down $500 million, you know, bring in 250 chemists, what have you. Then as they come to the preclinical studies, everything shuts down. Because nobody understands the impediment caused by blood brain barrier. So uh, that is one reason very few laboratories in the world either have the, the background, experience, or the money to carry out this kind of extensive work. So hopefully, uh, I think uh, some of you would appreciate how much effort has gone into carrying out this research. But at the uh, you know, end of the tunnel, the major shining light is that we have identified four very, very potent uh, openers of KCA channel and we'll say how we can synthesize them and take them to human trial, clinical trial. And all the work was done here in New Delhi, not in the USA, where all the other work was done, which I share with you. Okay? So thank you for your attention, and I'll be very happy to entertain any questions you may have.